YouTube, team keep it clean. Good morning. I hope everybody is doing so good today. I love you. I hope everything is going well. Pat Ricard, who was putting it out the A. I'm not just a fullback, I'm a tight end. Reports came out that he wanted some tight end money. And I told y'all, I don't blame him. Hey, you should try to get as much money as you possibly can, especially, especially if you're a fullback, because it's the last of a dying breed. Now, we haven't seen exactly what the terms, I mean, not the term, we haven't seen the money of Pat Ricard's new deal, but Pat Ricard does have a new deal with the Baltimore Ravens, as expected. I kept saying that. I, I expected him to go test the market. And there wouldn't be a crazy market for Pat Ricard because it's not going to be no crazy market for fullbacks. It's just not. And that's, of course, nothing against Pat Ricard. Y'all know that. that That's just what the market. It, people aren't going crazy for fullbacks, whether you're a good fullback or not. But the, I expected him to go test the market and then end up coming back to the Ravens. So it is a three year deal, but we just don't know what the money's looking like yet. Oh, I like what Jeremy Fowler put. Jeremy Fowler put, uh, Baltimore gets a key hybrid piece back with Ricard, a three-time pro bowler, able to line up just about anywhere in all three phases. So those phases being offense, defense, and special teams. Um, so, again, no, no shocker here. This is nothing new. Um, this is, I, I feel like most people expected this to happen. Uh, so good for Pat Ricard. Now, um, some things with Pat Ricard. Uh, just to clear some things up. Nobody has an issue with Pat Ricard, the player. Nobody does. They know who Pat Ricard is. They know he's good at his job. All that good stuff. Nobody has an issue with that. My concern, personally, is just for the Ravens' offense as a whole. Now, I do know that context means a whole lot. It means a lot. And there were a lot of times when Patrick Ricard was out there because he was out there as like a blocking tight end since Nick Boyle, he was still hurt all last year. We get that. And Ravens offensive line, they were hurt all last year. We get that. I mean, the entire Ravens, they were all hurt last year. We get that. But context also matters when there would be a, a good amount of plays where Patrick Ricard was lined up in the backfield, and they would motion him out wide, and he would take the place of a pass catcher. He would be out wide, and and it it would just like when I would see it, I would be like, "Hold up, what? <laughs> What's going on here?" And it wouldn't even be for plays that were like, "Oh, think about a screenplay." That's designed to go to Patrick Ricard's side and he would be one of the lead blockers. Because that would be something. It wasn't that. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was that he would be out there as a pass catcher. And it's like we would have guys sitting on the bench where that's their job as wide receivers. And it, it would just be very head scratching. Like the Ravens would come out and they would have. Four guys, four pass catchers on the field, usually Mark Andrews, maybe three tight ends, and, and they would have uh, Patrick Ricard in the backfield. Then they would motion him out. And I was, whoa, okay. I mean, we could have just came out five wide and empty set. You could have had another receiver out there or something. But the biggest thing is just the usage of Pat Ricard. Because we know Ra Ravens run the ball. They are going to run that football. We know that. You got Pat Ricard, excellent lead blocker. Pancake Pat, Project Pat, we know about Pat Ricard. That's why I said earlier, he is he does a good job at his job. But our concern is when the Ravens have him do somebody else's job. Well, I can't speak for everybody. I, I'll just say me. That would be my concern is when the Ravens have him do somebody else's job. And this, uh, I, I said it earlier this offseason, that... If they bring Pat Ricard back, to me, that would let me know the direction that the offense is going in. Um, hopefully, I'm wrong, but 
that lets me know the direction that the Ravens offense is going in, or more so the direction that the Ravens offense is staying in. Now, it's, it's, it's of course possible that they could be, they could still evolve and take it to another level and change up some stuff, which we hoping. Because again, remember last year, and I've, I've, I've continued to give them credit for it last year, and I will continue to give them credit for it last year. Uh, but at the same time, again, context matters. Because last year, the Ravens, oh, they became this like, this is a pass happy team. It was like, oh, okay, Ravens. So we, we could pass the ball. We could put up some numbers there, throwing that football. Let's get it. All right. Hey, let, oh, are we catching up to the NFL? Are the, Ra the Baltimore Ravens catching up to the rest of the NFL? It's a passing league. The, 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 the refs, the, the, the NFL, the rules, they benefit offenses so much, especially passing offenses. Why are we not taking advantage? Then all of a sudden, Ravens are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. please, what's he talking about? Let's take advantage. And they were throwing that football around. Didn't really get many defensive pass interference calls or stuff like that. But they were throwing that football around. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. And they were showing like, hey, we can throw the football. Hey, we can come back from being down. Hey, we can come back from being down multiple scores. They were showing us all this stuff. And it was like, yeah. We knew y'all had it in you. You just needed to show the world. So they showed, they showed the world. But um, I think that they only did that because their running game was suffering so much. No JK, no Gus, no, no justice. Their running backs with Devontae Freeman. And he got better as time went along, but still early on. Their running backs with Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray, um, Le'Veon Bell for a little bit. Uh, Tyson, I would say Tyson Williams, but Ravens ain't even use him. But those were their running backs, and it just it wasn't a pretty situation. So it wasn't like the Ravens were still thinking with that same thought, hey, we about to come out running that ball on these boys. Hey, it's about to be game over with our running game. No. Their running game ended prematurely. Before the season even started, their running game ended. And as the season went on, they were like, nah, we, we can't run. So we have to throw the ball. We ain't got no choice. The offensive line couldn't hold up blocks for the running game. The running backs, it was just rough back there. So they were, they were forced to change into a more passing team based off of what the situation was. They were forced. Um, and that was due to injuries and stuff, as we know. So with them bringing back Pat Ricard, um, it kind of lets me know, like, all right, Ravens, they are going to stick to that same. They're going to go back to, to their roots. Um, and I just, I'm just worried that their roots are going to limit them. That's, that's the one thing I'm scared of because it was last year was promising. Uh, when, of course, when Lamar was still, uh, healthy, well, actually he was never healthy, like the whole season. Cause you know, he was hurt cause he was just not as fast as he usually is. He was just off. But either way, uh, when Lamar was playing, it was like, okay, our offense is, is showing some promise. The, the passing game, it was like, whoa, let's go. Um, but, again, I think it was just due to the situation. So that's that's the one thing that I am uh, concerned about moving forward with the uh, Ravens offense. I got no problem with them bringing Pat Ricard back. I, I, I got no problem with it. But I'm just wondering how uh, how it's going to be. I'm, I'm wondering how they're going to use him. I, I'm, I'm just wondering, is he going to take, take away something from somebody else's plate? Now, again, amazing that what he does at his job, but are the Ravens just going to allow him to do his job uh, or is he going to be taken off from others, too? So we'll see, man. We'll see. Um, it is official, though. This is not going to be a Zadarius Smith move. Um, <laughs> it's not going to be a, oh, well, I, I, yeah, we agreed to turn. Oh, you know what? Mm, never mind. I'm good off that. No, this is Ravens have announced it as well. So, and you got to figure like Parrick, he couldn't play like that. Like Zadarius Smith, he can play, he can mess around and play like that and, and, and get away with it. But a fullback, you, you can't do that. You can't agree to terms with nobody and then turn around and leave. Oh, no. That, mm -mm. Now there's no fullback. You got to take what you can get. Parrick, tested the, he tested the market for a week. One week. Because remember, the legal tampering period opened a week ago on Monday. So he tested the market for a week. The market was what it was. 
and he's back now. So again, this this was expected. There, there shouldn't be anybody that's surprised by this move whatsoever. I don't think anybody should be. Oh, whoa, Paracor, he's back, really? No, man. This, especially since Greg Roman, he's back as well. Um, so we'll see what goes down now. Um, whew, I am sure the comment section is going to be very entertaining for this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love y'all. Um, we have a lot to talk about today, this week. Um, we have a lot to cover. Some stuff has been kind of slipping under the radar when it's come to the Ravens, uh, and other stuff has not. But um, congrats to Pat Ricard on being back with the boys. And, and remember, Pat Ricard, like he he made it. Like he he has a very tough situation as an NFL player. Because, number one, undrafted. He's undrafted. He did not get drafted by anybody. Number two, remember, he was a defensive tackle. He was a defensive tackle. And he was an undrafted defensive tackle. And they were like, mm, you know what? You're a defensive tackle. We're going to switch you to a fullback. Now, we ain't going to switch you to defensive end. We ain't gonna switch you to the linebacker. We ain't, we ain't gonna make you lose some weight and then get uh, t take your take your hand out the dirt. No, we are switching you to a fullback. You're gonna be an offensive player for us. So he was probably thinking, man, offensive. You want me to switch from a defensive to offensive player for the Ravens? Yikes! I know how y'all do with offensive players. It ain't so pretty. But he, <laughs> so he switched to fullback, and he made it. And now he is on his third contract. His third contract. So he done been to a couple of Pro Bowls. And he's on his third deal. So he got his undrafted deal. Then he got his second contract. And now he's on his third deal with the same team. So kudos to Pat Ricard for grinding. Uh, for making it through. So big shout out to him. Big shout out to y'all. Appreciate y'all. Like Pat Ricard, he probably told the Ravens he was for just a week. But he said, hey, it ain't going to be forever because I'm coming back. But anyway, I'm out.